Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me today. Um, in this video series, this video series is perfect for my first time painters. And first time painters are those of you that have never painted before or you're painting at home by yourself for the first time or with a group. So these are nice, simple, easy step-by-step -step instructions to help you get more comfortable with your mixing of your paint and with applying paint and with your tools and your brushes. So just have fun as you go through this process. Um, in this particular video series, it's gonna be a series of trees and I recommend that you try each one of the videos. One of the easier things to paint as a first time painter is a tree or a flower or a landscape. Um, or even a silhouette and check out my silhouette series as well for that. What you're gonna see in the description box below, there is a link to a supply kit. And if you're purchasing your own supplies, there's a, a link to show you everything that you need. You can purchase on Amazon or from your local art store or utilize what you already have. So again, as a first time painter, the more practice you give this, the better you're gonna get. And when you're ready to kind of take it to the next level, I want you to check out my online school, paintwithlovejoy.com. And on that school, I feature my Paint Your Pet class, and it is geared towards first time and beginner painters. And I break down all the steps. You learn about your value scale, which is a uh, core foundational art skill. And it's a skill that you can apply to anything creative in the future. So again, when you're ready to kind of take that next step and learn a little bit more and paint something that you really care about, check out my Paint Your Pet class on my online school. So I think that's enough talking for now. Let's go ahead and get started painting. All right, guys, this is going to be a fun painting, a nice tree painting. So head on over to where you have all your supplies set up, turn on your favorite music, and as always, make sure you take your progress photos. All right, so for this tree painting, we're gonna be kind of doing an abstract background, starting with our lightest colors and going darker as we get towards the edge. And you are welcome to switch up and change colors. So first I'm starting with white, with a touch of raw sienna and a touch of yellow, but we are still keeping this on the very light side. And somewhere in the middle, wherever, it doesn't have to be perfect, just to kind of draw an oval, and then you saw that I picked up some more white and kind of place that in the center because we do want our center to be as light as possible. And then I went back and grabbed the other slightly darker color and put that around the perimeter. All right, and those of you that are holding your breath right now, take a deep breath, relax. This is a really fun painting, and you get to be kind of abstract about it. So here you can see I'm making that mixture again, but going a little bit darker. It's still the white, a little bit of raw sienna, a little bit of yellow. And you can see I'm just kind of moving my brush back and forth, kind of quick. I don't want you thinking too much about this. And I do want you applying your paint a little bit thicker than you may be comfortable with. By applying your paint thicker, um, you're gonna have a little bit more workability and blending time. And especially if you're using student grade paint, um, student grade paint's a bit more on the transparent side. So apply it thicker and you'll get a bit more opaque coverage. So go ahead and take a progress photo just to keep them kind of in the order on your phone and as you can see I'm making my color a third time and if it's a little bit darker a little bit lighter than your last one that's okay don't stress about it being perfect and again going around the perimeter of that initial oval that I created and again if you wanted to switch up colors and do shades of blue or shades of purple you are more than welcome to change colors but with this painting, I want you to get real comfortable with painting a little bit thicker on your background and overlapping some of these colors. And you can see that as I move my brush back and forth kind of swiftly, um, sometimes it picks up the other colors, sometimes it um, blends in a little bit, but just play with this. You're getting comfortable with mixing your paint as well as mixing with other colors. So here you, can so you saw that I grabbed more of that raw sienna slapped it on there and we're going darker as we get towards the edges of the canvas. 
And if you prefer to have your darker color in a specific area that I don't put it, go right ahead and do that. And up there in the corner, you can see that I had a little bit of blue from a prior painting got on my canvas. I'm just gonna kind of work it into it. So if that happens to you, don't freak out. You just put a little more paint on top of it and kind of work it in. Bob Ross was awesome at calling those happy accidents. All right, pause the video, take a progress photo. There we go, and just adding more paint right on top of there. We will be using some uh, raw umber paint for our darkest sections in our next step. There we go, adding some of that umber. And it's kind of a, not quite black, but it's a grayish brown. And we're gonna put that on the bottom and still kind of going around the perimeter of the canvas. And if you are painting on a stretched canvas when you reach the edge, I do want you carrying that color around the side of the canvas. It makes it look really nice when you hang it on the wall, having that color wrap around the edge. Now, once we've got all the color on our background, if you would like to blend using your fingers, go right ahead and do that. So here you can see I wipe off the brush. Do take your progress photo. Then wipe off your brush and we're gonna go back and kind of smooth out and do some more blending. So I like to actually start back in the center, throw some more white in there to make that center a little bit more um, lighter and bolder. And then just from there, I'm working my way into the other colors. So I did paint the background rather fast because I do want your paint to still be wet so you can do some of this soft blending. And this blending method is called wet on wet blending. If you need to, every now and then, wipe your brush off. As you're moving into your darker colors, sometimes it's nice to wipe the brush off and kind of start over again. But if you work your way into your darker colors and then you go back to your light, you will notice that you have some darker color still on your brush and you don't want to put that into your light areas. So wipe off your brush after you pull into the dark areas and you're going to go back to your light areas. Um, after you do this a few times, you'll understand a little bit of what I'm talking about. If you happen to get some of your dark color inside your light areas and it's too hard to wipe off or blend out, just take a paper towel, wipe it off, and then reapply your light color. Anything with painting, it's never the end of the world. It's just kind of a new challenge to work through and get comfortable with your tools. And right now, you are an awesome abstract painter, just playing with paint. When we put our tree design on here, that's actually what solidifies the composition and kind of gives it an object that our eye recognizes. Right now, we're just working with color. So we've got a bit of abstract and just maybe notice how you feel about the color. How do you interpret it? And you, can, you saw a moment ago that I added more of the umber towards the edges. Again, just trying to keep it darker on the edge and lighter in the center. And I grabbed a bit more of the raw sienna just to help with that transition. Anything you want to do to your background, you do want to do it now while you can do your blending and while the paint is still wet. So if you want an area that's a little bit warmer, you can go in with more of your yellow, you can go in more with your raw sienna. If you switched out colors, you can go in with any one of those specific colors that you're using. But just play with your background. Your brain is learning a lot right now. And the next time that you paint after this painting, a lot of stuff that you're learning right now will make even more sense the next time. So painting's not about being perfect, but it's about getting a little bit better each time that you paint. All right, remember to breathe and relax. You're doing a great job. If you do feel like adding black to this to go a little bit darker, go right ahead and do that. If you wanna introduce other colors, go for it. And you'll notice as you're blending, lighter pressure with your brush will give you a smoother finish. More pressure with your brush will give you a bit more of a painterly brush stroke style. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo. And I do recommend letting your background fully dry before we move into placing our tree. So with the black paint, uh, kind of making this weird arch shape for the base of our tree, 
And it doesn't have to be perfect from the first get-go, but now we're adding some kind of loopy, swaying branches. You can add, add as many or as few branches as you like. And then as we get towards the base of the tree, I do want you to kind of thicken it up as it moves towards the bottom of the canvas, just to kind of give it a bit more structure and support. And if you need to use the small pointy brush to make your branches or move into this part, feel free to switch up your brushes and grab the other one. And again, I am using kind of thick paint and light pressure with my brush. It's kind of a bit of a backward swaying one right there. And then any little small branches that you may want and like I said earlier, you can add as many or as few branches to your tree as you feel like it. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo. Now we're gonna move into green paint and I did move back up to that small flat brush. And we're gonna do green with a touch of black. You still want it to be a bit more on the green side. So don't make it too dark. And we're gonna put our ground on there. And again, it's just kind of going on the base. Doesn't have to be a perfectly straight line. Um, it could be a little bit curved. And maybe taking up maybe about a half inch from the bottom. Quarter inch to a half inch. Totally your call. And kind of filling in that space. And then in a moment, we're going to grab some yellow and throw a quick highlight on the grass. And you'll see that it kind of blends in very quickly. So now grabbing that yellow quick little highlight and as you move your brush you'll see that it blends in so use light pressure if you do this and you lose that effect just repeat the process all right pause the video take your progress photo and you do want your tree to be fully dry before you put the foliage on so if you need to let this sit for a minute um, do that before you move into the foliage so using that medium flat brush, you can see where I was doing on the edge of the plate. We're going to do this tapping method. So I'm holding the brush perpendicular to the canvas and just hitting the bottom, um, hitting the canvas with the tips of the brushes, with the tips of the bristles. So I'm just holding the brush perpendicular to the canvas and just hitting the canvas with the tips of the bristles, pulling the brush back and just moving my way through. If you want to move up to the larger brush to do this you can do that as well but we are overlapping the branches overlapping the dots that we're making and creating the foliage on our tree and as you get to this process and start filling up the foliage on your tree i do want you to get out of your chair every now and then look at your painting from a distance of about three to ten feet away Notice if you like the foliage, do you need it more? Do you need it thicker? Do you need um, a different color on there? And fill up your tree to your liking. And if you wanna make this a rainbow tree or different colored foliage, go right ahead and switch out colors. So we're gonna kind of fill this up on each of the branches and then we're gonna go in with a highlight value in the same application. You're doing great. Remember to breathe and relax. Your winding, dancing, waving trees turning out nice. And you do want some of that foliage going off the edge. And if you're on a stretched canvas, carry it over the side. And again, if you need to apply your paint a little bit thicker to compensate for the darker branch underneath or to just give you a bit more opaque coverage. And for any of my students that are kind of having a hard time with some of the randomness or it not looking uniform, one of the suggestions that I give a lot of my students is push your chair back, keep your arm kind of straight, and then do it so that way you're at the distance of about you know, two to three feet away from your canvas compared to being really close and sitting right on top of it. Just give that a try and see if it helps. And over those black branches, if you just need to apply your paint a little thicker, go right ahead. You can always let this dry 
repeat the process, let it dry, repeat the process, and that will give you more opaque coverage as well. All right, remember there's even just a few little leaves, tiny little ones, so lighter pressure. Maybe yours is more in the fall, so maybe some of the leaves are falling off the tree. Again, make this tree whatever you need it to be for you. And using the white paint, just go right on top of the red paint in a few areas. This is going to be a bit more sparing with the white paint, but just to kind of break up the shade and give a few highlights on your foliage. And you can do as much or as little as you want, or you can fully skip this step, but just adding a few little highlights on there. And then when you are done, take your final progress photo and look at your painting from a distance. Thanks so much for taking time out of your day to paint with me. I'm honored, and I look forward to painting with you in the future. Cheers. Hey guys, I hope you had a great time, and I hope your paintings turned out really nice. Hopefully you're a little more relaxed now than maybe at the beginning of the process, and you should be very proud of yourselves. I'm proud of you for painting at home. Uh, like I said in the intro, make sure that you find a creative outlet on a monthly basis and just keep building the skills that you are currently learning. You do get better with more practice. As you're uploading your videos and uh, photos to social media, please tag me, Paint with Lovejoy, or email me your pictures, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Um, it really makes my day when I get your emails and see the student photos and see what you do at home. And it also gives me a lot of motivation to continue to make videos for this channel. So please let me know how you're doing. So again, thanks so much for painting with me today. I'm really honored to be a part of your creative process and I do look forward to painting with you in the future. Cheers. Yeah.